Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I hope everybody is staying cool in this extremely hot weather that we're having across the U.S. And uh, I hope that you are enjoying just some time, some restful time uh, with family, with friends, especially with the Lord, just staying close to Him. It's really important now, church, uh, that we keep our, our focus, that we keep our balance in the Lord. Times are getting tough and the enemy is on a rampage and he is looking uh, for somebody to devour as the Apostle Peter warns us that he, he roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour and God forbid that that would be you or me. Uh, we have to be diligent. We have to be alert right now. And the dream I was given a couple nights ago, I really believe brings light to this reality and uh, I wanted to share it with you and, uh, and share some exhortations with you from uh, a book called The Triumphant Church. I have talked about it before and uh, a visitation that Kenneth had with the Lord in the 1950s and some things the Lord taught him about spiritual warfare. But this is a picture I believe that, that my Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father has given me of how he sees right now what's going on in his house, in, in the church. And I may not be as aware of it because I, as many of you know, came out of organized religion back in 2008. And so I'm not always aware of this. And, and this dream is pointing to what's going on. And the Lord wants me to be aware of it and to care about it because many of my brothers and sisters in Christ are still in organized religion. And when I'm talking about the church, uh, please understand, I'm talking about the overall church, not individual fellowships, which I know there are many uh, small fellowships who are walking with the Lord and, and making a difference in his kingdom. But I'm talking about the apostate overall church. And uh, and this is what I believe the Lord is showing us that, that he is seeing right now going on. So in this dream I had a couple of nights ago, I was in my husband's dad's home. All right. So I believe this speaks to our heavenly father. And I was standing there looking up into a loft area and I see this plank of wood and it just starts to rise up in the air. Well, I immediately know that this is poltergeist activity, but my father-in-law is not doing anything about it. All right, so then in the next scene of the dream, I am in a structured church. I am as far back as you can get. I'm like next to the door and uh, I really don't wanna be there. And there's almost like a petition uh, between where I'm at and then the other side of this church building. But anyway, somebody approaches me and they ask me something like why I'm not attending here regularly. And uh, I basically say to this person, you have family here, I don't. And immediately in this dream, I start to imagine all right, now this is the first for me. I've never had a dream where I imagined something in a dream, but I imagined that I was taken to the front of the church and Jesus was standing there and that he said something to me like, I'm your family and I'm here. So I woke up from that dream and immediately the Holy Spirit is impressing on my spirit to declare an anointing over uh, I believe it was myself, my husband, and the whole body of Christ, which I did. I began to, I declared an anointing, which an anointing is power, right? So the Holy Spirit, the, the Father, the Lord are saying that the body of Christ needs power, right? So I did that. I believe that the poltergeist activity going on in the loft, this is what's happening in the Father's house. The loft indicating those who are elevated higher up, which would indicate leadership within many of the of the fellowships within the overall church. And the Father wasn't doing anything about it. And I was reminded when I was thinking this through of the book, The Triumphant Church, and this visitation that Kenneth had with the Lord in the 50s. And, and at, one, at one point, the Lord told Kenneth, the Father and I have done all that we're going to do about the devil until after the tribulation, you know, when he's bound for a thousand years. And he basically explained to Kenneth that all authority, all, all of his authority has been delegated to the church. And I just want to read a couple excerpts from his book to give you some uh, insights as to how we as the church are responsible for coming against any kind of 
demonic activity in our homes, our, our neighborhoods, our communities, uh, in, even in our fellowships, if God forbid there's anything like that going on. Because if we don't do it, church, if we don't resist the work of the enemy when we see it going on wherever it's at, if we're there and we see it going on, we have a responsibility to come against it in our authority in Christ. Because if we don't, we're basically complicit with the plans of the enemy and he will continue to push forward his agenda. And it's our responsibility to further the kingdom of God on this earth, to push back the darkness by being the light. Uh, but if, if we are on the sidelines, if we're distracted by the things going on in this world, we're not gonna be able to do that. All right, so on page 16, uh, Kenneth talks about the rulers of darkness. The, the Lord explained to him the different classes of the rulers of darkness. Uh, the, there's like four different spiritual classes. And he explained that rulers of darkness also try to rule over believers who are not walking in the light of their redemption or who don't know or don't exercise their rights and privileges in Christ. So it is possible for these, uh, that this type of demonic spirit to take authority over a Christian if they are not actively exercising their authority in Christ or if they're dabbling in sin and doing things that uh, open those doors to the enemy and give the enemy a legal right to come against a believer. So he, Kenneth writes this, Jesus told me that according to his word, believers are to take authority over these first three classes of demons, which were principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. He said that if we on earth will bind the operation of the first, first three classes of demons, according to his word, he will deal with the fourth class of demons, which is the spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, this is the, the place that's between our outer atmosphere, the first heavens, and then the third heaven where, where God dwells. There's a second heaven. It's not specifically mentioned, but it's alluded to. This is where Satan and uh, many of those higher entities rule from okay and we don't have authority over those so jesus is saying if you take authority over these other three i'll take care of that last class and then he gave kenneth a scripture matthew 18 18 to substantiate what he was saying whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven in the heavenlies and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven the heavenlies uh, and he goes on to write, we are to bind evil spirits in their operation against us in Jesus' name based on the authority of God's word. And the scripture references are Luke 8 or Luke 10, 19, Philippians 2, 9 and 10, Isaiah 54, 17, and Revelation 12, 11. And he goes on to say, that is what Matthew 18, 18 means. As we stand in our authority in Christ and bind the operation of the first three classes of evil spirits here in the realm of of earth that stops them in their operation against us when we do that then jesus said he will deal with the highest class of demons spiritual wickedness ruling in the high places all right so as christians as born again believers we have that authority and we're expected to operate in it and we we cannot be just running to the lord and asking him to do this for us this is something we need to be trained to do through the word of god and, and exercising this authority, all right? And then for somebody who isn't born again, Kenneth writes this, those who have not been born again and who have not come into the body of Christ are still in the kingdom of darkness. So every person who is not in the kingdom of light is still ruled or dominated to some extent by those demon spirits in the kingdom of darkness, although they may not know it. And then he references Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. But believers don't need to be dominated by evil spirits because... We have been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of light, Colossians 1.13. We are in the light where Jesus is our Lord. He is the one who is to dominate us. He is the ruler over us. He is our head, not rulers of darkness. In the last part of that dream, uh, Jesus had me imagine that I came up to the front of the church and he told me, I'm your family, I'm here. Uh, so I know I have a family in these various fellowships within organized religion. And Jesus sees what's going on. He understands the problems. And uh, so I am being made aware of them to share the warnings with you, just as a caution 
that if you put yourself under the authority of a man or a woman and you do see the Holy Spirit shows you there's some type of demonic influence going on within your leadership, it may necessitate that you come out so that you are not giving the adversary any legal right to come against you. Please, church, take all this to the Lord in prayer. Ask him for confirmation. Again, ask him just to show you uh, what, what you're dealing with, what you might be up against individually. And as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.